Uh, hi, my name is Ching. I'm uh, a new assistant professor at University of Michigan uh, ECS department. Uh, thanks so much for inviting me to this wonderful workshop of uh, twin semesters and representation learning. So in this talk, I would like to discuss about uh, some recent work of non-convex landscape analysis for over complete representation learning uh, and tensor methods and uh, neural collapse phenomenon uh, in the last layer representations learned of uh, deep network. Uh, so, so this talk will uh, uh, be partitioned into three parts. Firstly, I will discuss, uh, give you a little bit, uh, a simple overview, brief overview of uh, geometric analysis of non-convex optimization. And then we'll discuss about uh, overcomplete uh, tensor decomposition, which relates to a lot of the representation or complete representation learning problems. And lastly, I will discuss about uh, neural collapse uh, phenomenon in the last layer uh, representation learned of neural networks. So the, the, the last topic has not much to do with tensor methods, but I find it quite interesting. And it's pretty uh, new work uh, that we just archived in May that I'm um, I mean, happy to enlighten you a little bit, to entertain you a little bit. So first of all, I want to uh, give you a little bit of the introduction of non-convex uh, masses uh, to geometric analysis of non-convex uh, landscape uh, in representation learning. So, so when we're dealing with representation learning problems, uh, most of the problem we are dealing with is usually uh, non-convex problems that is in contrast to convex problems that have a local minimizer is global and which is easy to uh, optimize global optimality. But for non-convex problems, it's usually much more difficult that you could encounter uh, minimizers which are not global uh, and you could encounter settle points which are neither global solutions, uh, uh, neither local minimizers nor local maximizers. So in the worst case scenario, we uh, want to solve a non-convex problem to global optimality. Uh, you could encounter the kind of bad local minimizers which are not global, and you counter, you could also encounter a, a flat settle point that uh, finding a descent direction could be very difficult or computation prohibitive. So in the worst case scenario, non-convex optimization is could be a, a be hard uh, problem. Uh, but recently, a recent live work uh, started uh, uh, in representation. People find is that. Often the data has certain low dimensional structures and certain symmetry structures inside the problem that uh, so the average case uh, in, uh, that we study is really much better than the worst case scenario that uh, because of the structure of the data uh, and the natural non convex problem you, 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 con you consider often has benign uh, uh, geometric structures that often the global solutions are the targeted solutions up to a symmetry ambiguity and the strict settle, the settle point you counter is often a strict settle point, uh, which is avoid the worst case scenario. And uh, do, uh, under this framework, people have uh, studied many problems in uh, signal processing and machine learning, say the phase retrieval problem, low rank matrix recovery, and diction learning, and uh, some blind deconvolution, and even deep linear networks. So in this talk, I want to uh, discuss about two uh, recent progress uh, along this line that we uh, study over complete tensor decomposition. Uh, another, uh, and secondly, I will discuss about the neural collapse phenomenon in deep network training, which also under a simple unconstrained feature model, we also have this kind of phenomenon. And we will discuss about the implications uh, of this lab work. So the first work concerns about uh, over complete uh, decomposition. So the work, this is a iClear paper that we, we published last year that we provide the first uh, global landscape analysis for over complete uh, representation learning problems, uh, including the tensor decomposition and uh, over complete dictionary learning. And we explain why they can be efficiently optimized uh, to global optimality. So uh, the underlying the vanilla problem that we consider is this uh, false order uh, tensor decomposition problem that we, have a, a tensor, which is a summation a superposition of fourth order uh, components or the product of where the AIs are the, the products, so the components of the tensor. Uh, and our goal is that given this uh, tensor T, uh, our goal is to find uh, each component, uh, each component uh, AI, where you're with, uh, interested in a regime that M, 
which is uh, the number of the rank of the tensor is larger uh, than the dimensionality n. And the reason that we want to start this problem is because uh, many uh, uh, supervised repetition learning problems uh, can be reduced uh, to this uh, tensor, uh, overcomplete tensor decomposition, which I will discuss later, uh, say the dictionary learning problems that we'll discuss a little bit. Um, and to solve this problem, a natural idea is just to consider uh, an optimization formulation. Say we uh, minimize a loss function uh, which is fourth order polynomial with respect to Q. Uh, and uh, we constrain the problem over the sphere to remove certain, um, certain scaling ambiguities uh, inside the problem. Uh, and this naturally uh, reduces, I mean, it can be uh, rewritten as a maximizing or, or mi uh, minimizing the minus L4 norm of this uh, uh, tensor component uh, constrain the problem over the sphere. And this problem is well studied uh, when uh, the uh, rank M is larger or smaller or no larger than N. And when you are assuming that the components are orthogonal, where recent work, uh, some previous work showed that the function actually is a strict set of function that has very nice geometric landscape that every local minimizer actually is corresponding uh, to the, the components up to sign uh, ambiguity. And there's no bad local minimizers for the optimization landscape. So here the landscape uh, is plotting the function landscape, uh, plotting the, the objective over the sphere. And uh, the, 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 the blue uh, value means the function uh, value is smaller and the warmer value a color means that the function value is higher. So you can see that function in low dimension actually has very nice geometric properties. And in high dimension is also the case. Um, but the thing is that this kind of analysis of orthogonal case cannot be generalized to the overcomplete uh, case. And for overcomplete case, uh, people study the problem under some random assumptions of the components. Uh, but the most of the analysis is usually a local that is up to some up uh, level set, but the, the measure of the level set is usually quite small with respect to dimension. And the sum of and the other approaches try to uh, tackle this problem based on some squares relaxations, uh, which is really kind of expensive. So, but empirically, if you optimize this problem in the over uh, parameter uh, over complete regime where m is larger than n, uh, then actually the global you can find the global solutions using the gradient ascent or descent uh, or the power methods. So. So our analysis uh, provides an analysis in the work per, uh, complete regime where we consider this uh, loss function, but uh, M is larger than N, but uh, our result is a little bit conservative, which is means that our over completeness is only a, around a constant, where the constants where the K is larger than one, but it's a constant uh, within a constant. And our assumption on the component A uh, is that A is it's also, I mean, the previous analysis in the under complete case is A is orthogonal. Here we make some uh, assumptions A that is pretty near orthogonal, but it is not exactly orthogonal because it's a over complete regime. And what we showed is that every local minimizer critical point is either uh, a strict set of points that can be escaped using Hessian or uh, is close to a target solution or uh, say one uh, column of or one component of A up to assign ambiguity. So the assumption that we made on A uh, is the following, that we assume uh, that the rows, uh, uh, the row orthogonality of A, or in other words, uh, the matrix is a union norm uh, type frame matrix. And we also assume some incoherence properties, uh, say uh, that the columns of the, the components of the matrix A uh, is, left, is, is is the minimum correlated. So the inner product of the maximum inner product between each column of A is bounded by some small, a small mu constant. And under this regime, we can uh, uh, show a global geometric landscape analysis for this or complete tensor decomposition problem. And this tensor decomposition problem also relates to or complete uh, diction learning problems, say, so we know that the dictionary learning problem is that given the data Y, we want to learn uh, underlying representation dictionary A, where often the dictionary is overcomplete. So we can view the dictionary as uh, the tensor components uh, 
um, there. And, and we assume that we, the data is really sparse. We want to a sparse representation with respect to dictionary. Our task with dictionary learning is that given why we want to jointly learn a dictionary and sparse coefficients from the data, uh, and it turns out that this problem can be reduced to the tensor decomposition problem or complete tensor picture easily, uh, is that suppose that we are optimizing this L4 uh, loss problem over the sphere, and we are trying to find uh, one column of your dictionary, say uh, one column in the overcomplete regime, then suppose your X, uh, the sparse coefficients satisfy some zero mean, uh, say Bernoulli Gaussian distributions, the sparse distributions, then if you're taking the expectation of the loss function here, with respect to X, and then it reduces uh, to this uh, tensor objective function. So this suggests that actually you can do uh, expectation and concentration analysis by reducing the problem to a tensor decomposition problem. And you can provide a similar results uh, for overcomplete dictionary learning, uh, which uh, finds one column, probably finds one column of your overcomplete dictionary. And for dictionary learning, uh, for because of this, we can provide the first global results uh, of the landscape analysis in the overcomplete regime. And we do some simulations to first of all, uh, uh, plot uh, the phase transition uh, of the overcomplete we can deal with. Uh, it seems, seems that actually our theory uh, says that overcomplete we can deal with is only a constant, but actually in practice, if you use a gradient descent type of methods, the re regime you can work on is much larger. It is uh, probably uh, around in uh, the oral you can deal with is run into the n square. Another thing is that for dictionary learning, often you want to uh, recover all tensor decomposition. You want to find all the components, right? So here we're only finding just uh, one atom. So here, uh, because you know a better landscape that every local mean matter is just uh, a one of the components up to a sign uh, ambiguity, uh, then you can just uh, do random initialization and repeat the random initialization. What we find is that if you use run m log m independent trials, you can find almost uh, uh, you can you can uh, recover all the uh, components uh, in tensor components. So uh, secondly, I want to uh, discuss another uh, interesting another work that we just archived this month. Uh, which is on the neural collapse phenomenon, the last layer representation learned uh, of neural networks. So uh, the works that we uh, just archived uh, shows is that we analyze, we provide a global landscape analysis of the training loss uh, with respect to the last layer features and the, the classifiers under a simpl certain simplification, which we call the unconstrained uh, feature model, which we'll elaborate a little bit later. And our, the, the result we showed here uh, explains the prevalence of neural collapse uh, of the learned representations of the, in the deep neural network. So, so we know that a deep network uh, that in the past decades, uh, the neural, neural network has witnessed uh, tremendous success in computer vision, uh, natural language processing, and many applic uh, machine learning applications. Well, but people still view a neural networks as a black box. And the typical, uh, in the vanilla form of neural network is basically you have an input X and you are passing through each layers where each layers have uh, the weight matrix uh, after, uh, and you're passing a linear uh, transformation of the weight matrix uh, followed by a nonlinear activation where the nonlinear activation can have a ralu, uh, entry-wise nonlinear activation and like ralu or or max pooling, et cetera. And we call the theta as uh, to be the, the weights of all uh, the deep networks. So, so for classification problems, where if you want to solve a, a trend, say a network on classification, pro for classification problems, what people usually do is that, say if you use your favorite net, net, network architecture, the ResNet, where you have an output and then you want to match uh, the training labels, which is usually a one hot vector. And people will usually optimize a cross entropy uh, loss. Uh, and they put in for some certain weight decays on the network parameters. Uh, they usually just L2 weight decay. Uh, and one fundamental challenge to understand the deep networks is optimization. So 
we know that uh, for, uh, if you plot the random two directions uh, of the high dimensional space of the neural networks, you can virtualize the networks that the network's optimization loss is highly non-convex. It's obviously not a strict saddle function. Um, and people, you to study this type of fun, uh, the problem, uh, people makes, in the past, people makes uh, various simplifications where one direction is that people go linear, that they assume deep linear networks uh, and uh, they can show certain uh, benign geometric structures. Um, but this is a, a very disconnected, I mean, uh, usually the deep network is highly, the power of deep network is really because of non-reality. Another lot of work try to go shallow that they started to layer neural networks. And some other recent work try to go wide that they started highly over parameterized networks, say, and this enters the neural tangent kernel regime. But most of the results uh, doesn't match with the uh, empirical observations. They are, they are disconnected with the uh, empirical observations of uh, deep networks, say, the neural tangent kernel, uh, where it's argued that the weights doesn't move too much. But actually, when you're doing uh, in practice, the weights uh, move a lot in practical neural network training. So this doesn't uh, explain, uh, cannot much explain the practical phenomena of neural networks. So here, instead of studying all the neural networks, idea, what we do here is that instead of studying all the layers, we try to look at the last layer features and the classifier, what the classifier and the features learned in neural networks. So, so we are trying to explain this kind of a neural collapse phenomenon that recently uh, discovered Pe Pepin and Donohoe et al. that published in uh, PNAS last year, where they observed a kind of intriguing phenomenon in the last layer features and the classifier of neural network. So what we, they observe uh, by the authors is that, so if you look at the, the neural network, the output of the neural networks and you, just look at the last layer classifiers and the last layer features. So what's the last layer features representation learned of neural network? Well, the, the phenomenon that find is that if you look at the classification problem, say if you look at one class, where the, the argument, the empirical observation uh, in that work suggests that the neural network, the, the, the last layer mapping that you learned, uh, actually is mapping all the points to a single class mean. and the and the variability within the of the output is collapsed to zero, which means that all the points are mapping to the class mean. Uh, and uh, across class for all the classes, uh, they are maximally distances, which means that actually uh, the class mean are forming a simplex equiangular type frame. Uh, and another, on the other hand, if you look at the last layer classifiers, the last layer classifier is, is matching, perfectly matching of the class means. Uh, so which means that actually we are learning the network is so powerful in the oral contrast regime that actually we are learning the perfect classifiers. Um, so how can we understand this kind of uh, phenomenon in deep networks? So uh, I mean, before that, I want to uh, give you a more concrete, uh, precise uh, mathematical uh, definition of a neural collapse, uh, which is a a, a benign symmetric and uh, very elegant structures, mathematical structures, that we look at the balanced uh, training data sets where we uh, view W as the last layer, uh, W is the last layer classifier, and H is the last layer features. So what neural collapse means that the within class variability claps on the features, which means that for all the output of the features, actually the, 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 they are all Collapse uh, to the class means with zero variability. And the features, the class means, uh, actually are, are linearly separable. So if you, you can just use linear, separ uh, linear classifier to separate the output of the features, and they are maximizing difference, uh, distances, that they are the conf configuration of this kind of maximal di distance is forming a simplex ETF, uh, which has very nice uh, mathematical structures. Uh, on the other hand, so another phenomenon of the last layer representation is that the last layer classifier W uh, is perfectly matched with the class means of H. So they are perfectly aligned. So which means that we are learning the perfect or uh, uh, best classifiers because the network is so powerful. And, and because of this, actually you can do very simple decision rules uh, just using the nearest class center decision to classify 
uh, uh, the, the fissures. Uh, so how to understand this kind of phenomenon? Well, so we, uh, the idea uh, to analyze, to study this phenomenon that we make certain simplifications uh, because, I mean, if you look at all the layers, the, the nonlinear uh, interaction between all the layers actually makes this problem highly uh, complicated. So we consider a simple, uh, some uh, simplification is that, so we treat the output, the features uh, to be unconstrained. Say we treat this as a free optimization variable. So this may seem kind of unreasonable, but later we'll using an experiment to demonstrate, actually this is some substance or kind of a reason, uh, reasonable in, to some extent. Uh, so the loss function we consider here is uh, the, the cross entropy loss plus uh, weight decay uh, on W and H. Uh, and uh, the validity of the reasoning, underlying reasoning uh, for this uh, unconstrained feature model is that the modern deep networks are highly overparameterized uh, such that basically they can approximate almost any point in the feature space, so that actually we uh, we we, tr we can treat some some sense H as a free optimization variable to study this last layer uh, approach. So this is a kind of a top down approach that we study the output, the last layer, and looking into the the the, 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 the shallow layers. Where previous approach is looking from the first output input to the output. So we are looking take a different approach that we looking from the output to the input. And this uh, model, this unconstrained feature model is also called layer peer model uh, that recently started by Fong and uh, Wei Su Yichel. So, they, uh, so they, you can see that basically we are peeling off the L minus one layers and we're treating them as a, a free optimization variable. That's why you call it a layer peer model. There are some existing work, they're trying to study this, this work, this uh, problem. Uh, well, most of the work only study the global optimality conditions, but uh, showing that the simplex ETF and neural collapse phenomena are the global solutions, uh, it's only global solutions. But the thing is that the global optimality condition, uh, only study the global optimality condition cannot guarantee efficient algorithms to achieve the global optimality. So in this work, we go a little bit step further. So we study this, uh, regularized uh, uh, cross entropy loss uh, with balanced training data. And what we showed is that, although this is still a highly non-convex loss, uh, but what we showed is that when the class, number of a class uh, is smaller than the feature dimensions, uh, actually, the, uh, actually not only the global solutions uh, satisfies the only global solutions such as other uh, neural collapse uh, solutions that satisfy the neural class properties. Also, the function with back to W and H has no super local minimizers, and it's a strict settle uh, function that every local minimizer actually have a negative curvature uh, direction that can be uh, escaped. So uh, this uh, gives a high level message, actually the new networks, uh, the reasoning that why the networks always learns this kind of neural collapse uh, features and uh, class, uh, classifiers. So uh, to cooperate uh, our uh, series, uh, we, we run some simulations on the, the real network architectures uh, and the standard image data set. So we run our experiments on CIFAR 10 data sets uh, with uh, ResNet 18 deep network architecture. So this is not unconstrained model. So, and we test our uh, the, the network with uh, different uh, training algorithms. Uh, we utilize the vanilla SGD, uh, Adam, and FBFGS. So you can observe, so the NC1, NC2, and NC3 are measure di different quantities of neural collapse. So you can see that uh, no matter what kind of algorithm you use, uh, you always uh, observe this kind of a neural collapse phenomenon uh, uh, for for the standard data set and the practical network architectures. Uh, so this kind of a neural class phenomenon seems to be independent of the algorithm that you use. So another uh, phenomenon that will occur, uh, observe, uh, interesting phenomenon will observe is that the neural class seems to be independent of the input on training data sets. So what we do is that we test this neural class with random labels. So we 
test on CIFAR 10 datasets uh, with a ResNet 18 architecture. And the thing is that instead of using the standard labels, we just uh, for each input, we assign a random label for the, for the training data. Uh, and we vary the network uh, wise. So you can see that uh, if your network uh, is more over-parameterized, you observe more obvious neural collapse phenomenon. But, uh, and it seems like uh, when your network is highly over-parameterized, uh, you always observe this kind of neural collapse phenomenon that even regardless of uh, this kind of random labels, uh, it seems like that the neural class phenomenon in our training data sets uh, is kind of independent of the input. So this kind of like, uh, uh, means that if the Chen Zhang and the Benrex paper that they observed that this kind of overfitting issue, uh, the, the memorization issue have this kind of a benign structure in the last layer representations. So finally, I want to uh, show you some uh, implications of understanding this kind of uh, neural class phenomenon for a practical uh, deep network architecture design. So the key observation uh, here is that for, for this uh, neural collapse features, so what we showed is that the global solutions of the last layer representation and the classifier are neural collapse. So, and this happens when K, the number of class is smaller than the dimension of the upload feature. So because of this uh, very benign uh, elegant structure of the last layer classifier. So the one implication is that, okay, so why not we just fix the classifier uh, as we don't, we just fix the classifier as uh, the simplex ETF. So there's no need to learn the classifier. And we know that for modern architectures, usually convolution architectures, where the last layer, the last several layers uh, are usually uh, fully connected layers. They have also parameters, right? So if you fix this last layer, you don't learn the last layer. Actually, you can save a lot of the parameters uh, on modern network architectures. Uh, another implication is that you can do dimension reduction. So it's a neural collapse, right? Happens when D is uh, no smaller than K, right? So you can just uh, use a smaller dimensionality for the last layer feature, and you can just uh, fix the last layer feature dimension to be the number of classes. And this can further reduce uh, the number of parameters uh, uti utilized uh, on the modern network architecture. So overall, so we, what we can do is that we can fix a last layer classifier uh, as a simplex ETF, and then we can uh, shrink the dimension of the last layer features uh, to be uh, the dimension of the, the number of classes. And we did some experiments on CIFAR-10 datasets. So here we utilize a uh, 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 ResNet 50, uh, and we achieve state-of-art performance on CIFAR-10 uh, datasets. So these are all real network architectures with the last layer classifiers are fixed to be simplex ETF with the dimensionality of D equal to K. And you can see that we can achieve 90%, 95% accuracy, uh, which is on bar with, unlearn, uh, with learned classifiers with high dimensions. Uh, and you can observe more severe uh, or more obvious neural collapse with, with fixed classifiers and, and, uh, uh, and the dimension reduction. And your, your training accuracy is also achieving uh, a, a perfect 100%. So this means that actually, a bit, by understanding the neural class phenomenon, actually you can uh, have a better guidance principles to design the last layer features and the classifier you learned uh, through the neural network and reducing the memory and the uh, parameters utilized in deep network architectures to save computation and memory. So uh, to sum up this work, so we, so through this work, we provide the first complete characterization of the learned representations of the last layer features and classifiers in deep networks. And I think this, uh, so, so the last result we present here uh, have shed some principle lies on designing the last layer features and uh, classifiers. But I think uh, by understanding the last layer features and rotations, it can go much beyond the network architecture design. It can might potentially shed lights on generalization and robustness and transferability of uh, deep networks, which could be uh, interesting work uh, in the future, into the future. So finally, this is uh, the whole line of uh, this talk. 
that we started two problems. One is overcomplete tensor decomposition. Another is a neural collapse phenomenon in the representation learned uh, through the deep network uh, training. I would like to thank my wonderful collaborators for this uh, network, uh, for this uh, lab work. Uh, thank you so much. And I would like to take any questions.